Yeah, boy, don't get mad because JR about to bar me right quick. JR got you looking cool, too bad you got no work. You crazy. I'm looking pretty good. I, mean, I just want to show you the, 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 the metamorphosis right quick. All right, I hit you, I hit you when, when I'm done getting the heck out. I'll text you. During elementary, uh, I know that I only get one pair of shoes throughout the whole school year. So I was always trying to figure out a way I can hustle and make some money. I asked my friends if they would let me cut their hair and I would charge them $5. It wouldn't be the greatest haircut, but I would try my best. About four months of cutting hair, I was able to buy my first pair of Nikes that I wanted. It was a pair of 97 Pippins. This was my barber shop. I started when I was in sixth grade. This was home base. This is where people would feel as if they could get fresh. Yeah, this is where I felt like I did my groundwork. Later on, as the transition from eighth grade to ninth grade, Filipinos would want to get lined up which is more of a predominantly black haircut. I had to teach myself how to cut that style of hair. Since Filipinos wanted it, I would try to learn how to cut black hair first. And then all my Filipino friends wanted haircuts like that. It was my birthday weekend, so I had kept calling him back in the Bay Area. And I'm like, man, you gotta come out and visit me and come to LA for my birthday. So when he came out here, he kept telling me there's a barber shop that I wanna go to on Fairfax that I wanna check out called Legends. So I walked in one day and the owner was cutting hair on a Monday. I came up to him and I said, what does it take to work here? And he looked at me, because at the time I still had a long tail and spikes on the top of my head. I was this Filipino kid trying to work in this black barbershop. I ended up scrounging up three models, which was my friend Alex and his cousin and his friend Brett. Three weeks later, I ended up moving all my stuff from the bay and living on a couch and cutting hair there. Four years later, he's cutting the best of the best. And you said I got a, a 6X, 6 plus S? 6S plus. Well, it looks like they go just get more money from your boy. So ill, though. I like it though. You watched the video one time. When I first met DeAndre, his hair was short. The first time I cut his hair, it was just an all even haircut with a lineup around. And throughout the years, we try to figure out what haircut fits his head the best. As the years went by, we decided to give him a mohawk and fade the sides, which would make his head look bigger and you could actually tell that he got a haircut. That was the first year. Then we transitioned to actually fading the sides, which is called a burst fade. So it, it wouldn't be the most common haircut, but it would, it would have a different fade, which started behind the ear and burst out into the mohawk. He's continuing to grow his hair and still fade the sides and, and line it up to make it look clean and sharp with the goatee. Now we're still transitioning, trying to find what his next look is for the next season. Where'd Riley go? Where'd she go? <gasps> there she is. Now right, you want to sit in the chair next to me? Uh-huh. You sit in this chair. There you go. Through Chris Paul in a, a State Farm commercial, I met Stephen Curry. And that to me was probably, I don't know how to describe it, but more of like a, a dream come true. Ever since then, like we built a relationship and we became hella cool. What day are you going to Philippines? Is that the second, first stop? That is the second stop, so the fifth. What day is that? That's Saturday? Oh. I'm going to teach you some words then. I need you. <laughs> Do you know anything at all? I don't, all right. I know. I got 14 hour plane ride to learn as much as I can. Well, let's just get you some simple thank you. So thank you is Salamat Po. Salamat Po? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's easy, right? That's salamat Po. Yeah. People would try to knickknack and pick on things of how his haircut isn't clean or it doesn't really stand out. So I had to figure out a way to make his hair look clean and for people to actually say, oh, wow, like, that's a dope haircut. So we decided at one point just to grow his hair, which gave it effect to make it darker on the top of his head. And you, we would fade out the sides in the back. 
when you actually line up his hair, you could actually tell now because his hair is darker. Then after a while, we started using this sponge. It's called a twist sponge. It's more of a natural, clean look. It's super sharp lines with a, a nappy fro. Manila's not even gonna know what hit him. <laughs> In my opinion, I think relationships is the key to everything in barbering. Every time someone sits in my chair, I honestly feel like I have about 30 minutes yeah. to gain somebody's trust. Uh, looking good, feeling good. That's the thing about a haircut. You can walk in there with no confidence. You're walking out of the barbershop with confidence, baby. You're perfecting their image. You have a huge part in someone's image. You know, one thing about building relationships is actually caring about someone. That's where barbering actually starts for me, is actually caring about someone. So eventually you build that relationship with somebody. There was a lot of good memories in this garage. And what's crazy is some of these clients that I have on the wall, I, mean, I still cut to this day. Always coming back to this and, and reading this and, and seeing this shows hard work and dedication and, and loyalty, I want to say, is because a lot of my clients stayed loyal. And that only made me want to be loyal to everybody else. 